Hello, welcome back. Today we are looking at the backgrounds of our web pages. Think about the backgrounds as subtle, sometimes not so subtle, ways of adding extra content and richness to a website. Maybe it's a way of adding color to the website. Maybe it's a way of um, setting the mood on the website. We've talked about color theory and how important that is. And using the background and choosing those color palettes in the background really is what is going to send that mood to the user looking at the page. You can also do some pretty cool effects as a background. I have an image up here, a website up here, from a company called Media Boom. Uh, that's M-E-D-I-A-B-O-O-M. And you'll notice the first thing they have is this call to action, generate more sales from your website. So I'm gonna close that call to action and then just look at my background here and take it a, a clean look at it. They have a video playing, which is really kind of cool. Um, and in the video, it, it's going through and showing their people at work. It gives you a feel for what is going on in the company. Uh, look at the colors they picked. Gold. I, I mean, I imagine that uh, this was not an accident, is choosing that bright, shiny gold to give you the idea that this is the gold standard, the winning company, so to speak. So that's the vibe that they're going for here. They're, they're trying to get you interested into this website and be convinced at a glance that this is the company you should be going with to make your um, website awesome, which is probably why they have this flashy video sitting here in the background. It's really not that hard to code to get this video here, but it, it definitely is non-traditional to have a live video kind of running in the background. They also have a nice little chat button down here at the bottom to, to make sure you're um, able to talk with people right away. So that's not really background though, that's foreground. We're really interested in the video here. And then when I scroll down, we have a nice clean background for the rest of the website, just alternating that black and white to, to clean up the divisions in the website. So we can kind of see exactly what section we're looking at. And I believe each one of these would probably just jump to um, similar kinds of uh, pages with the same color scheme, uh, that black and white background, um, and gold, of course, being the highlight color for all of these. But uh, it really gives you a sense of what they're trying to do here. Here's another one uh, from France, believe it or not. It's a tourist site. And uh, again, that image, that solid image of the the beauty of the provinces in France and looking at the, the landscape. It's clearly what they want you to experience. And my province, stay local, is kind of what they're saying there, uh, encouraging you to enjoy their tourism. Uh, if we scroll through the rest of the site, it's pictures and black and white, which is very classic. And then clearly we have this the yellow that just jumps out at you, which is very intriguing, and more pictures, uh, black and white, more pictures, very magazine-like. Uh, this is a cool little background here on this part of the page where they have some video playing. Um, the blue is interesting here. Again, clearly there's a division, uh, and you can see this is really kind of like the footer area. It's nondescript. It, it, uh, in the way it kind of begins, but I guess the color is really designed there to uh, get you to, to see that we have switched to the footer. So again, another example of color and uh, being used in the background and lack of color, in this case, the white background, kind of giving you an idea of this is like an online magazine. You know, this is what a magazine I would expect to look like if I was looking at a travel magazine. I have a, a front cover of that magazine with a beautiful picture on it and the title of the magazine. And then as I scroll through, I have articles and pictures on a white background. The next thing I want to look at is Spotify. Uh, 
clearly there is something going on with this color scheme. We have this blue and this green, which is their logo colors, and that's it. Just listening is everything. That's all that's on there. This is all color and one single message. So this background is, is really, really important to them because really the background is the call to action that there is nothing other than listening on this website is what they want to convey there. And that's it. That's all that's on the page. At the bottom, we have our footer. At the top, we have our header. And then we just have this one color, well, two color image um, that is telling us we should just listen. And once we sign into the account, we can go through and kind of see the player and all those kinds of things. But then we have our other links that it's a very simple website, uh, given that uh, it, it is a powerful application that you have access to once you, you know, sign up and get that website. So that's kind of interesting. And then the last one, um, this is a uh, barbershop and men's care company, Brooklyn Soap Company. And you can see, again, they have that image to create a vibe, uh, kind of, um, I would say, uh, vintage kind of vibe, very hipster kind of thing that they would be trying to in entice you that, hey, if you want to look like this person or be like this person, then you should discover our products. You can see our story. And again, very magazine-like. You can see there's the story, more another picture background. So that's really important to them to show you uh, the pictures about where they're from and who they are. And now they have a picture collage inviting you to be part of that and show, hey, yes, I'm also part of that kind of um, group. So this, in this case, it's the pictures that really are the background. And the pictures convey a certain kind of mood and thought and uh, call to action, so to speak, just by itself. So it's, it's enriching the site. It's not about being front and center about everything that's on the site, but it's definitely there to give you that vintage vibe and to let you know this is what the people look like who use our products. And if you want to be like that person and you see yourself as that kind of person, then yeah, you should be buying our products. In, in terms of making a background, uh, one of the tools I want to go over is Photoshop. You could also use Pixlr, and we've done that before, but I thought maybe this time I'd show you a different product. Photoshop is a paid service. Uh, sometimes it's available in uh, our school, and you can use Photoshop. Uh, it's not an online service um, where you would edit online, even though I think they do have an online editor. But for the most part, you would use a project-based um, application-based version of Photoshop. The first thing you do when you create a new project is you got to choose its size. So you need to think about what is your size of your screen that you're going to use. Uh, and here they use the size in inches, but I might want to change it to pixels, you know, and think about my screen width in pixels. What is the resolution I'm designing for on my screen? In this case, it's 2100 by 1500. And that's going to be important later on when we talk about switching from media types, where we go from the, the phone to a laptop to um, a tablet and what kinds of screen resolutions so we would be designing for. We might have three different backgrounds that we're using in our design and have to create those three different documents. But let's say I'm going to go 2100 by 1500. That sounds fine for me for, for my first foray into this and and then I give this get this nice plain white background that I can have all these tools with that I can draw and I can paint and I can in, import other pictures and I can choose my color scheme uh, maybe I want a nice blue so I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to draw a nice rectangle that is blue on my background um, change my color here by using this little color tool, switch it to blue, there we go, and redraw that. There we go, so now I have a nice blue background. Um, important in Photoshop, when you're working in Photoshop, are the layers. 
there is a background layer down here on the far right hand side i find um because it's locked and you can't make it transparent and you can't work on it i find it difficult to use so i usually hide it and kind of and delete it or convert it to just a regular layer and then i prefer to work with just layers that are free flowing so i can move maneuver things around and you can see now i can put the white background on top of the blue background um, I, I just like to work that way if you want to have a locked layer like let's say I wanted my um, first layer let me see undo some of this there we go I right, said so I got my background locked again so let's say I'm I delete this layer and this background, I want to change the color of the background. Um, I could go in and draw that rectangle again, but this time on the background. Do that. And now that background, whoops, let me do that again. That didn't do what I wanted it to do. You see, this is why I don't like that background layer. Um, I guess because it's locked, I can't edit it, but I could unlock it and then draw on it, I guess, and then relock it. And then that way I won't ever lose my background. See, it, maybe I'll just rename this and unlock it again. Yeah, so I'm just going to stick with I don't like um, using that background layer. It, it kind of, it's just difficult to manage. If you get really good at Photoshop, which clearly I'm not fantastic at Photoshop, um, you might find better uses of locking that background but i i don't like it and then so you got your colors and you kind of have to think about this is what's going to be behind all of your text and you could throw text up here to get an idea of what it might look like when you're picking your fonts um backgrounds are pretty simple you might want to do a picture as a background but if you're going to do a picture as a background you want to put text up against it and see what it looks like so one of the things we can do is insert a picture here let me find a good picture to insert so what I've done is I've just done a search on Google for backgrounds nice and, and simple and I've switched it to Creative Commons so I can get my um, image uh, uh, let's see let's just pick one I kind of like that one that's kind of cool and remember to get to the image um, I know I want to go and I can look at the license details that's important to look at when I in include this in my final product but I can open the image in a new tab and I have my background I'm just gonna right click on this and save the image and I'm gonna save this in my downloads there we go and now I have to go to file open the way Photoshop works with this is it has to be a, it's a separate file so I'm opening this up and you can see here it is and I have two tabs so if I want to put this picture in this background, I have to copy it and then paste it into here. Now you'll notice it's not the right size. It's kind of small. So I can click on this little tool up here in the upper right upper left hand corner and I want to change the size of this. and transform it. I can do it um, by typing in the numbers. Or as I find it easier, if you look up here, there's a little text box that says, a checkbox that says show transform controls. So I click that and now I can just drag this and make this bigger. But you don't want to change the aspect ratio of this. In other words, um, some of it's going to go off the edge of the screen. And you'll also notice that it might be a little blurry now because I've made it bigger. Um, so watch as I make this bigger again. You can see how it kind of blurs a little bit. So you want to make sure when you're picking images that the image is going to be um, close to what your background layer in terms of size is going to be. So you don't want to pick something that is super small and you have to stretch out in order to fit on your background. So I think this is kind of a cool background and I would I would be happy to use this as a background and, and put my header. I think text will show up nicely on here. I might have to be a little bit 
careful in terms of a super light text showing up over here, but this will clearly would be great for lighter text. Gives me some opportunities in terms of choosing, you know, different colors of text, which I kind of find intriguing. I could do white text over here and darker text over here and darker text down here and, and lighter text over here. So this might be a background that I choose. Um, another kind of background that you can do, I'm just going to add another layer here, is you can do gradient fills. So if we do another rectangle, but this time I'm going to use the gradient tool. And when I drag this, I kind of want to drag it on a diagonal. And I get to choose what direction that gradient is. And then when I click on it, I can actually choose the color properties of that gradient. See, when I look at the gradient up here, I can choose the colors that I want to go into that gradient. Right now it's blues. And if another quick way of doing this up here, you see, and I can choose how this, let me move this off to the side. And I can choose what this gradient looks like by just sliding these sliders around. I can choose, you know, what is darker, what is lighter, and change, you know, what that gradient is. I could change the color. Let's say I want a green instead of a blue. I'd have to redo the gradient now because I changed the color. And then I do redo a gradient on top of that. And you can see now I have that green color. So gradients are kind of fun to put on websites again uh, because you, you have the main color, but then you can kind of fade it out and you might want to do that in terms of where you're putting text and highlighting different sections. So you're going to make a background as part of your next assignment and you can either use Pixlr or you can use Photoshop. The same types, types of tools are available in Pixlr as there are in Photoshop. Have fun with it and I will see you next time.